Hello and welcome to the English live stream that will help you improve your English skills. Now, if this is your first time watching, my name's Craig and joining me over there is my good friend, Lynn. How are you doing, Lynn? I'm fine, Craig. <laughs> How are you today? You okay? I, I'm very well and excited to be live streaming to help people with their English. Mm -hmm. Lynn is from putitlikethis.com. What can people find there if they haven't seen you before? Tell them what you do. Yeah, well, I'm an online teacher of English. I, I teach nearly everything now online. And um, I, I kind of specialize in tailor-making courses for individuals. So if you have a specific need, I think that depending on your need, you need to find different types of English. So some students of mine, okay, they're the typical ones that you often hear of people preparing for exams or business English, for example. But I also do sort of more specialized courses too. So if you particularly want to improve maybe your writing skills or you want to improve only your pronunciation or also I do um, courses for teachers who teach their subjects in English and um, and if they want help um, to develop their lessons and also to become more confident while they're presenting them, then I also do things like that too. So if you go to my website, putitlikethis.com, you can find out the types of courses that I offer. Mm -hmm. Putitlikethis.com. Go and have a look at a lovely website over there. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't seen me before, my name's Craig from the website mansioningles.com where you can study English for free, especially if you are a Spanish speaker. There's lots of support there from basic level up to advanced. We have a podcast over at inglespodcast.com that will also help you multitask and learn English at the same time. And if you're interested in conversation practice, go and have a look at my new website, which is at englishcraig.com. <laughs> You're and the there. only one. Are you the only English Craig out there? <laughs> I was quite pleased that I could actually find that address, English That's Craig. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, because good. I am English and I teach English. Mm -hmm. And uh, one way I do that is by teaching in groups online conversation. So if you want to improve your confidence and your fluency, go and have a look at the website and you can book a free consultation over there at englishcraig.com. Now, if you're watching, hello, please tell us where you're from, say hello. Uh, where are you based? Where are you watching from? It will be nice to see some comments in the chat. And while you're doing that and saying hello, we'll tell you what we're going to talk about today. What's today's topic, Lynn? Well, what is today in America? If you're living in America, what is the day today? The day is Thanksgiving, I believe. And then we're also going to talk about Black Friday, which is tomorrow. tomorrow. That's right. <laughs> yep. So I'm very thankful for having Lynn as a co-host. I'm very thankful for people watching. And we're going to look at what exactly is Thanksgiving Day and look mm -hmm. at some vocabulary connected to that. Hello, Caroline. Good to see you. It's been a Hi, while. Car oh, yes, Caroline. That's been a long time. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Caroline That's from great. Alicante. Yep. Yeah. Good to see you too. And Diego from, from Colombia. Colombia. Uh -huh. Fantastic. Lovely. Hello. Hi, Diego. Uh -huh. So first of all, what do you know about Thanksgiving? Do you Is Thanksgiving an English thing, Craig, do you think? Um, no, like it's a UK English thing. I no, mean. We, we're not no. really. No, we're not really into giving thanks that much on a national scale. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's more based um, in and around American culture. And um, so I bet looks... everybody, I bet everybody is glad to know that tonight they have two experts talking about it. <laughs> 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 two Brits, two British people We're talking British about people an American holiday. Exactly. <laughs> but it is a national holiday in the US and it's not always celebrated on the same day. It's celebrated oh. on the second uh no, on the on the fourth Thursday of November. Let's get that right. Uh in, and in where? in America. In America. In the US. In America. Yeah. Uh -huh. In Canada, where it's also celebrated, it's celebrated on the second Monday of October. Wow. 
And That's in a bit the, confusing then, isn't it, really? Yeah, it is. And uh, the fourth Thursday of November in the United States. It's also celebrated unofficially um, in countries like Brazil and the Philippines, but officially in the US, Canada, Granada, St. Lucia, Liberia as wow, well. Wow, in Africa, Liberia. In yeah, Africa, wow. who'd have thought? Uh -huh. Yeah. So and it's an interesting holiday, isn't it, really, Thanksgiving? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's all it's about... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, because it's not a religious holiday, is it? A lot of holidays across the world are religious holidays, aren't they? Like Christmas or Yom Kippur or, or Ramadan. Uh -huh. a, lot of, a lot of big celebrations are related really with religion. But is Thanksgiving really religion? Not really, is it? It's not a religious holiday as such, is it? No, it seems to be centered as many sort of pagan festivals are around this time of year. And I think it's connected to the harvest. The harvest uh -huh. is where you collect the food from the field. And if you think about it, there are many festivals in the autumn and in the spring. Mm -hmm. um, whether they're religious or whether they're not religious, they tend to be grouped around those times of year mm -hmm. in many religions. So, no, as far as I know, it's not a religious holiday, but it is a sort of a harvest holiday mm -hmm. um, celebrating gratitude. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And it goes back to when the pilgrims landed in the US um, back in 1621. Uh, they came on, uh, what was the name of the boat? The Beagle? The Mayflower. The Mayflower. The yeah. Mayflower. Be uh -huh. Beagle was a different story. Yeah, the Mayflower. <laughs> The Mayflower, uh huh, and so 1621. So that makes it quite an old holiday, isn't it? That's like, well, well that's 500 years old, isn't it? Yeah, 400 years old. No, 500. 500, yeah, 500 years old. Wow, yeah. that's an old holiday now, then. So that it's it, so it's not a, I, I mean, I think in Britain sometimes we think, oh, that's like a modern thing, isn't it? Thanksgiving, it's a modern thing, but it's actually not if it's 500 years old. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. And we've got some uh, vocabulary up on the screen, words like gratitude, because you want to be mm -hmm. grateful for having food. That's that connection again with the harvest. Mm -hmm. and so just gratitude's be... the noun, isn't it? Yes. Gratitude's the noun and grateful is the verb. So you express gratitude, but you are grateful. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And abundance the abundance is when you have a lot of something. So if you have an abundance of food, you're very lucky you have enough to eat. An mm -hmm. abundance of joy is a lot of happiness. Mm -hmm. So to have a lot of something, it's also a celebration of having a lot to eat, which is why at Thanksgiving people usually eat too much, which is what British uh -huh. people do at Christmas. Yes, overeat. They overeat. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then we have the word harvest, which uh, Craig explained before, which is basically when you collect all your crops from the field, everything that you that you grow. So it could be, I don't know, wheat or corn or rice or or fruit as well. There's a fruit harvest. There's a wine harvest, too. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So harvesting is when you you've put a lot of work into planting and taking care of something and then you harvest. It's also used as a verb, isn't it? It's the same. The noun and the verb are the same to harvest and a harvest. Uh -huh. Exactly. And while we're looking at this vocabulary with you, um, if you haven't said hello, please say hello. And if you have any questions about these words or anything we're talking about, just put your questions in the chat and we will get to them. Just want to say hello to people who have joined us. Yeah, Diana, well. Diana is in the in the chat, a friend of mine, Diana, hello. Uh -huh. And uh, okay. Hebe from Uruguay. Thanks for being here. And Elizabeth okay. is here from Bolivia. From Bolivia. Well. And we've got somebody from Mexico too, Hiram. And uh, Paula from Argentina. So all the countries are being represented now. But I don't see anybody from America who is because they're busy eating right now, are they? Or they're about to eat. <laughs> I would imagine they are. Yeah. Yeah. Eating up mm -hmm. So do any of you who are in the chat now, do your country celebrate uh, Thanksgiving? Is it, is, it a, is it a festival that you've heard of or you've known? Or do you just know it from the American movies like Craig and I do? 
<laughs> Have you ever participated in a Thanksgiving meal, Craig? No, I haven't. No, uh, I'd like to, but I've mm -hmm. never been invited and I've never been in the US at this time of year. So. Uh -huh. So well, I, not. I actually have. I have been in a Thanksgiving meal. I remember now, but, but it was a long time ago when I lived in Germany and um, my German friend invited me because she had four American friends who had agreed to do a Thanksgiving meal in her house. So there were about 10 of us, I think, but the whole meal was prepared and managed and led by the poor American friends. <laughs> and it was amazing. And it is true that you eat huge amounts. And they they bought a turkey. <laughs> it was very funny, actually. They bought a turkey that was so big, it hardly fitted into the German <laughs> oven. And, um, and they came around, the Americans came around, I think, it's sort of like lunchtime and they left my friend, they put the, the turkey with all the butter and everything and they put it in the oven and they said to my friend, we're leaving now, we'll come back in five hours, but you have to look at the turkey every 45 minutes. And they had um, a huge, I mean, they had like, it was like a pound of butter and it was melted in a, in a pot and they had this huge, pipette which is like a big test tube and you had to she had to take up the butter the melted butter in this pipette open the oven and then she had to squirt the butter all around <laughs> <laughs> all around this big chicken and after two hours she panicked so much that she rang me up and she said you've got to come and help me I'm overwhelmed <laughs> with this turkey so the two of us looked after the turkey but then the Americans came back and they came back with all these other dishes like pumpkin pie and 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 sort of things that I'd never eaten before creamed corn and things like that and it was it was quite exciting it was quite nice uh -huh. Did you enjoy the food or, or? I did enjoy the food. But yeah. when we had that word earlier about abundance uh, too much, we had the word abundance. Well, oh, we didn't actually finish the words, but there is another word at the end of that, which is called leftovers. And the problem with this meal was that they made so much food. There were so many leftovers. I think they made food. We could have had two more Thanksgivings and still been full. So much so that the turkey, they couldn't put it into any container. And so we had to get a bin bag, you know, a, a big bag for the bin. The big black sack. <laughs> a big plastic bag. Yeah. A big black pa plastic sack. And the turkey had to go in there. And the Americans took it because then they strip the meat and then they do other things. But mm. it was just so much food. It was, and it, there was a lot of, and that's the last word, leftovers. So there was a lot of food left over, surplus food. And that, that um, meal that Lynn's describing with so much food and good food and plenty mm. of it, lots of it, is called a feast. It's also a verb, so it's a, a verb and a noun to feast on uh -huh. something, to feast on the turkey, to feast uh -huh. on the meat, and to have a feast or go to a feast is a, a very luxurious, very long uh, meal with lots of really good food. Mm -hmm. They often talk about feasts at weddings, don't they? Wedding yes. feasts. Uh -huh. Yeah. Hiram is saying that it's not a holiday in Mexico, but due to the proximity mm. to the United States, we, we know one or two things. Alejandro, That's good, it, Hiram. So you keep us right. No? If we say anything wrong, please help us. Yeah, because we're <laughs> British, so we're not very, um, not very in closer. touch with Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, Alejandro is from Argentina. Do you have mm -hmm. Thanksgiving in Argentina, Alejandro? Let mm -hmm. us know. We know it's not in Mexico. Mm -hmm. No, and Hebe is in Uruguay, and mm -hmm. she says it's not in Uruguay. Can you see? Hebe says it's not, so it's not in, in Uruguay. Uruguay. Uh -huh. uh, uh huh. No, that's not it. I'm looking for Hebe. Oh, there she is. There she is. No, not, no, in, in, Uruguay. not in Uruguay. Not in Uruguay. Uh huh. Mm. Not in it's, Uruguay. It's not in Spain either. And, and we've got Diana's telling us about Costa Rica. 
does she say? Hello mm. in Costa Rica. We don't celebrate Thanksgiving Day, although recently stores offer sales and many chefs teach recipes for this holiday. Wow. Huh. Yeah, I think I think the idea is quite nice, isn't it, about Thanksgiving? Giving thanks think, for things, yeah. Yeah. And I think that I also think it's it's kind of it's more appealing to me now because in countries like for example this thanksgiving feast is like a feast that we have at christmas traditionally in the uk isn't it the meal lots of food lots of leftovers lots of feast and getting together and we're gra we're always grateful at christmas and things but of course you've got to realize now that the world is a different place and britain has multiple faiths mm -hmm. doesn't it you know yeah. i mean like britain is so multicultural now and there's like lots of Muslim people, there's Jewish people. I mean, there's always been Jewish and Muslim people in Britain, but now we're very, very multicultural. And it's also coincided with there's, there's a tendency to be less religious than in the past. So I like the idea of Thanksgiving because it's a festival that sort of, it includes everybody, doesn't it? You know? Yeah, I like that expression. It's... Um... It's multicultural. You can, uh -huh. you can also and say it's, it's a melting pot yeah. Uh, yeah. of different mm -hmm. cultures and different religions. It's a melting pot. Uh -huh. um, yeah, so that, that idea of leftovers, to leave over is the phrasal verb and leftover is a noun. And the idea of a family reunion, which is another word we have up on the screen, to get together with your family is another phrasal verb. We can make a phrasal noun out of that. So you can have a get together. When the family mm -hmm. get together, everybody meets to have a meal, to have a feast, and uh, it's a get together, a family get together, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is nice. So food, um, what food is associated with Thanksgiving? We've got some vocabulary <laughs> for you. We've already. <laughs> I already <laughs> sorry. You already about said that. well no, no I already you didn't, said it all. <laughs> you didn't mention everything, Lynn. You mentioned turkey with the butter with the and butter. the um, pipettes were spraying the butter uh -huh. inside the oven. And then mashed or sweet potatoes. We had both. I remember they made both. Wow. I think we had three types of potatoes, actually. I think they had mashed potato, which is when you, if you don't know what mashed potato is, you you cook the potatoes and then you squash them so that it's like a puree. So it's kind of quite, um, it's very easy to eat, mashed potato. And they had mashed potato. They had roast potatoes, which are potatoes that are in, in lumps that are done in the oven and they're nice and crispy on the outside. And they also had those sweet potatoes, mm -hmm. which at the time I had never eaten before. Uh, but now They're not common they, in the UK, are they? They're not common in the UK, no. But they mm. are lovely. They really are lovely yeah. sweet potatoes. I like them, when, especially when they're roast. Uh -huh. And then we've got squash, which I'm just looking at now. It's calabaza, if you are a Spanish speaker. Pumpkin, uh, isn't it? Is it a pumpkin? It's a pumpkin. A squash. Oh, it's okay. It's a type of pumpkin. Uh huh. Yeah. It's a type I did not. Of pumpkin. I've learned it's the something. American. Uh -huh, because the Americans call like the they they have those pumpkins that they use on Halloween, which are very very um, well. This how what's the shape? They're kind of Oval? you know that you cut the faces in them. Uh huh. They're sort of like flat, aren't they? Flat circles sort of mm -hmm. thing. But the 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 other pumpkins are like the type we get in Spain, which are, which are sort of elongated. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're kind of like, the, it's a different type of pumpkin, but that one is traditionally squash because it's good. Okay. And, um, mm -hmm. okay. And uh, what we've got, corn, green beans, self-explanatory. I think you know what green beans are. Cranberries. Yeah, Alejandro uh, mentioned cranberry sauce too. Cranberry uh -huh. sauce and pumpkin pie, mm -hmm. which is very nice. So those are common things that that's eaten during a Thanksgiving feast. Mm -hmm. um, let's have a question. Would you rather help to prepare a Thanksgiving dinner at home? I know what Lynn is going to say in answer to this question. <laughs> or would you, you prefer? <laughs> yes, of course I do. I know what you're going to say. 
or oh, go out <laughs> or go out to a really nice fancy restaurant so there's no washing up and people wait on you and bring you food what would you prefer to do so i'm asking you lynn and i'm also asking everybody watching uh, i want to know what right you think chat. i would say how do you think you know what i would say <laughs> oh, because you would prefer to have a lovely dinner at home with your family ah, wouldn't okay. you of, of course well, you would. family yes i would family and friends <laughs> i have to say if i think of the um the the occasion many years ago when i had the thanksgiving festival we had such a good time. We had such a laugh. And especially in the afternoon preparing it, when my friend asked me for assistance to pipette the the, the, the turkey in the oven. To baste, to baste the of, turkey. Of course, we had like three hours before everybody else came back. So what did we do? We opened a bottle of champagne, didn't we? So we had a great time. <laughs> so And it was a, it was a lot of fun. But it, it's strangely enough, at that Thanksgiving dinner, I didn't know most of the people in the room. I'd never met the Americans before, and I hadn't met some of the other friends. So I only knew my friend who whose house it was, but I didn't know anybody else at the dinner. But it was lovely. So it mm -hmm. doesn't have to be with friends, really. I think it could be with strangers, too, if, as long as everybody wants to have a nice time, you know. But I think it's lovely when it's when it is in somebody's house rather than mm -hmm. going to a restaurant. I think the atmosphere is much warmer, it's cozier, and I mm -hmm. think it's a better experience on that kind of festival on, on Thanksgiving. Yeah. Comment here from Maureen. She says that people from Argentina, Bolivia, Uruguay, Mexico, and Costa Rica are Americans too. Absolutely. We all live in America, the continent. I'm an American. Uh, come from Costa Rica. Yes, that's true, Maureen. You're absolutely right. Although British speakers tend to say American when they're speaking about uh, the United yeah, States of America. Uh -huh. And when we're talking about countries like Mexico, Bolivia, Uruguay, we tend to say Latin American. So mm -hmm. we differentiate that way. But uh, of course, geographically, or South American. you're right. I have to say, when I grew up, we always used the word South American to re refer to people from Argentina, Brazil. And then we called North American people from the USA and Canadians. And, Mex we and Mexico. And, and yeah, no, we said Mexico for that. No, we didn't. They used to say Central American. No, but you wouldn't call somebody a Central American, would you? know? you call the region Central America. Yeah, and uh -huh. uh, but, North America would be Canada, the USA, North and America Mexico. Technically, North America technically is with Canada. But when I used to use the word North American, I never, I never meant Canadians. Canadians were always Canadians. You know, <laughs> Mexicans were always Mexicans, and yeah. and a North American was from the USA. But I suppose it's usage. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. It depends on it. Alejandro says people go to a parade, of course, and watch the Super oh, really? Bowl. Yeah. They, do they do that? I didn't know that. So it's very common, is it, to do like parades, like it's a whole like, like afternoon activity as well before the dinner. I didn't know Maybe. that. Apparently, yes. Apparently, they have parades on Thanksgiving. See, we, uh -huh. you know, we're learning from you. We're learning, so thank you, yeah. thank you for uh -huh. for saying that. Uh, a neighbor of ours, Vicente from Valencia, is saying that uh, it's not a custom at the moment in Spain, although Black Friday is, and we'll get to mm. that later. <laughs> but yeah, globalization um, levels mm. the playing field. Mm -hmm. I think, though, that Thanksgiving, the difference probably, Thanksgiving might not catch on. To catch on means to become fashionable phrasal verb to catch on i think thanksgiving won't really catch on until it's a national holiday because I, I mean you've got to realize in 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 america in the usa they all have a day off don't they across yeah. the entire country so they make a, a long weekend of it as well exactly yeah. and it's a possibility for people to come together again with their families if they live a long way from each other but of course, in Valencia, it's not like uh, Black Friday is a shopping day. <laughs> so that's definitely come. But I, until the Spanish give us the, th the fourth Thursday in November off, I don't think we'd be doing a Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> well, I'd vote, I'd vote for another holiday, that's for sure. I would prefer a 
Caroline, I would prefer helping to prepare the dinner at home. Yeah, you agree with us then, because I associate mm -hmm. Thanksgiving with a family celebration. Me too. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. uh, hello, Jose. <laughs> Good to see you Jose? here. Uh -huh. Jose, yeah. Uh, it means a special moment. And what better place than at home with your family and friends? Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, what better place? That's nice English, Jose. I like that. Uh -huh. Maria Clara says, I'd rather prepare dinner at home. Again, for this time of celebration, it's better to be at someone's house, to be ourselves. We can say, let our hair down. Uh -huh. That's an That's idiom, mean. which means uh -huh. to relax. You don't have to think about how you're eating at a restaurant, what you're wearing. To let your hair down is to be completely relaxed and laid back uh -huh. and more comfortable, as I you suppose. say. But your English is fantastic there, uh, Maria. Everything was perfect in that. Well done. Uh-huh. Yep, to let your hair down. Let's put that in the chat. To let your hair down, hey, which is to, to be yourself. Uh -huh. And nice. Hiram, hello Hiram, he says, um, instead of Black Friday, we have El Buen Fin. The same thing, but for the whole weekend. Where are you based, Hiram? Oh, uh, maybe Toledo. Okay. <laughs> or is that your, <laughs> or is that your surname? surname? Maybe that's your uh -huh. family name. Yeah. And whole, uh, uh, sorry, um, Hiram, whole is spelt when you mean an entire weekend, then whole is spent with a W, W H O L E. Uh huh. Okay. So, what are you thankful for? I mean, if it is a celebration of thanks and we're saying thank you for the food on the table, I think from films I've watched from the US. They tend to sit around the table, all the family and friends together, and everybody has to say one thing that they're thankful for. So I'd oh, like really? you to write. Yeah. You've not seen that in films. You've not no, seen that. I, I, yeah. I think maybe I have, but maybe I didn't notice. Which uh -huh. I think is a lovely thing because it makes it you think, what am I thankful for? So can you please, everybody, write in the chat, what are you thankful for? Mm. Hmm. Are you going to share, Craig? What are you thankful for? I'm thankful for my profession that I get the chance to do things like this with you and help people improve their English. I, it's a very rewarding experience. Hmm. And I think I'm very lucky to be in this profession because, let's, I mean, some people hate their jobs. Some hmm. people don't want to go to work on Monday. And I think I'm very lucky to be in this profession. So I'm thankful for, for that. Mm -hmm. And you? Well, I'm, I'm generally a thankful person, I think. So I, I, I mean, I've got, I could give you a whole list. But if I had to pick one right at the moment, I have to say I'm thankful that I live in a place where there's no war. Because at the moment, there's so much bad news going on all around the world with with terrible, terrible things. And then I think how lucky that I am that, that that's not happening where I live. Um, so I hope that continues as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and whatever your politics are, whatever you think about the wars going on at the moment, I think everybody would agree that it's the children who are suffering because they didn't necessarily vote for anyone or anything and and mm. children are just innocent and the fact that where you happen to be born dictates mm. the kind of life you're going to have purely by chance then i think yeah you're absolutely right we should mm. be thankful for not being in a in a place not being born in a place in a place that, where, where there's where so, there's war so at the moment uh -huh. alejandro is thankful for waking up every day and breathing <laughs> I'll second that, Alejandro. Although 100%. many people, many people, Alejandro, aren't thankful when they wake up because they want to sleep longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I suppose once you're awake, then you're happy that you're awake. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ah, Hiram's in uh, Mexico. Okay. Ah, Hiram's in Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Uh, Caroline couldn't agree more. No. She can't agree more. That's good. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And what else? Elizabeth thankful for her family. Uh huh. Yes, that's a good thing uh -huh. to be thankful for. Yeah, uh -huh. that helps. Um, Paul is thankful for her children. Uh huh. 
family and friends. And yeah. I don't know who it is, but somebody, Anna, Anna Gomez, said she, you cheated, Anna, because you're thankful for too many things. You said having a, <laughs> having a family, a partner, friends, a job, and for being healthy. That's not allowed. You can only say one thing. One thing. <laughs> if you had to say one thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, okay, shall we move on to Black yeah. Friday or shall we have one more question about Thanksgiving? Have you got another? Um, I, I do have another. It's quite an interesting one. Uh -huh. Because this is getting towards the end of the year, we're nearly in December, it's a good time for reflection, looking back over the year. Can you tell us one thing you've done this year that you're especially proud of? One thing that you're proud of that you've done this year? Craig, go on, tell me. <laughs> I haven't had time to think about this. Um, nothing especially comes to mind. Um, I'm proud of how, how my classes have gone, um, the classes that I do online. I've had some lovely students in the groups, and I'm very proud of the way they seem to be happy with the classes that I've given. So I'm very proud of the way that's going, which mm. is kind of connected to what, to what I said before. Mm. But um, I do take pride in uh, in trying to help people as much as possible with mm. their English. What are you proud of? Well, when when you when you asked me. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a very silly thing it's not very generous towards others but I am proud of myself this year because I'm getting older now and I still try to push myself to try to feel young and active and fit and I want to try new things and this year in the summer I tried stand-up paddling for the first time that's um, difficult to keep your Atlantic. balance. Well, it, was, it wasn't actually, uh, but we had a good trainer and it really wasn't. And it was lovely. And we went through the, it, we were in the Algarve and we went in all of the, the caves along the coast. Oh, wow. Um, with the stand up paddling. And when I finished it, I was a bit nervous before I started it because I thought, oh my goodness, am I too old for this? Will I make a fool of myself? Everybody's younger because in the group, they're all much younger than me. And they're probably thinking, what is she trying to do? <laughs> So I was very, very sort of anxious before <laughs> trying this. And when I was younger, I didn't, I didn't care. But obviously, you have new challenges, yeah? And I was frightened about would I be able to be fit enough out on the water for three hours, you know, and, and, and all sorts of things. Would I be able to keep up with everybody? But I was quite proud because I did. And it was well, great. You should, be, you, should, you should be proud. For uh -huh. people who don't know, stand-up paddling is where you stand on a board. It's a bit like a surfboard. Or it's a very big surfboard. <laughs> a, uh -huh. wind, a, 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 wind, a wind surfboard. A wind surfer without the sail. It's just mm. the board. And you have a big paddle, like a canoe paddle, and you move, you paddle, and you stand up, and you move on this board in the sea. Mm. Would you consider taking that up as a hobby? To take up means to do it, um, start doing it as a hobby because, I mean, we live near the sea. It wouldn't be difficult to do it. We yeah? do, but in the Mediterranean where we live, Craig, it's very boring because the thing that I loved about it in the Algarve is that you, with this stand-up paddle, you were, got, you were able to access caves, places that you could never normally get inside. Right. But the idea yeah. of just paddling out on the ocean, I'd rather be in a boat, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, I get I get I get You know that. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and in I the do. Mediterranean, we just there's nothing to see. Well, I, I probably there is if people do it there, there must be many things to see. You can see fish. We did see quite a lot of fish and things. So you can see fish and nature a little bit but really there's not a great deal to see in the Mediterranean because we have a very I mean we have beautiful beaches but it's more for swimming and things it's not really for there's no waves there's nothing you know nothing so so complicated about it yeah, yeah it but if I lived boring. in Portugal I'd do it all the time <laughs> But then again, if I lived in Portugal, I'd try to learn to surf because that looks much more exciting. <laughs>
Alejandro says he's living abroad. Where? Where are you living, Alejandro, at the moment? Oh, And he's happy yeah. with his present situation. Well, that's mm -hmm. a good thing to be thankful for. Question from Hiram. Is this celebration more important than Christmas? Oh, I um, don't know. I think they give it equal input. I know it's very, very big. And whereas I think... One thing that makes it so important is that it is a time in the U.S. for families to come together. So very often at Thanksgiving, probably also at Christmas, but Thanksgiving has a reputation for people traveling all over the U.S. They mm -hmm. go from they fly from all over the country so that they can be with their family, with their extended family at Christmas. So maybe uh, at, at Thanksgiving. So maybe at Christmas it's just you. And your partner and the kids, perhaps, in your area. Mm -hmm. But at Thanksgiving, you will fly to the other side of the country so that you can be with your wife's family or your family and your grandparents, etc., where everybody comes together around the table. So it sounds that, like it's a bit like the Chinese New Year. That happens a lot in China, doesn't it? Because people travel really long distances in china don't they yes. for chinese new year to go back with their families and Probably also similar again because i said it's a kind of secular it's a more secular um activity isn't it possibly more people celebrate because the usa also has is a multi is a melting pot it's got multiple mm. faiths so possibly more people do celebrate thanksgiving than than christmas yeah Yeah. Could be. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth says um, she's proud of her work, uh, mm -hmm. principally in, in rural areas of her country. Uh, every, every place she goes, she learns something new. That's nice. And mm -hmm. uh, Caroline, I don't want to show off. <laughs> ah, Caroline, well done. But she's you proud got... of passing the Cambridge C1 exam. Well done. With a B well grade. Done. With a B grade. Well done, Caroline. <laughs> why does that why does that not surprise me caroline's an ex-student of mine and she's a very very <laughs> hard worker and um yes you should be proud of that congratulations caroline i'm really pleased for you yeah so next it's c2 <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. um ignatio lives in Chayen. um however i'll visit my brother's family in wales for thanksgiving wow Wow. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. Uh -huh. um, why is it celebrated in November and not December? Oh, there's a question. Um, there's a question. <laughs> Let me quickly look at my notes here to see if I can find an answer <laughs> for you. Or are you asking Mr. Google? I suspect <laughs> no. I'll give you my little invented answer. This is an invented answer. All right. No, I, I don't take any responsibility for this. But I suspect if it's related to harvest... Harvest is typically in October and November and not in December. December is usually too wintry, isn't it, for harvest? Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, mm. absolutely. I'd agree with that. Uh -huh. Especially in North America. If that's where it started with the pilgrims, the harvest time must have been in November. No? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on. Black Friday is tomorrow. What do you know about Black Friday? Why is it called Black Friday? Mm -hmm. And it might not necessarily be what you think. So I've been Googling, and I think I know the answer. But what do you know can about make, Black Friday? Yeah, well, go can on. Can I make up my answer like the way I made up the last answer? <laughs> go, go for it. Go for it. <laughs> to make up means to invent, right? To make up, phrasal verb means invent. So if I make up my answer about Black Friday, I would say it's because it's the Friday that I would never, ever attempt to go into the city and go shopping. It's a black day for me. It's marked on my calendar in black to remind me not to attempt to go shopping. <laughs> Did you know the real um, meaning of it, or was that a guess? That what? Yeah. No, Did that's you... the, I just invented that now. That's just you're, me you're, making things you're up. You're absolutely one hundred percent right because what? the meaning <laughs> of Black Friday, and I'll tell you. I used to think that Black Friday was because businesses wanted to finish the year in the black. 
So if you're in the black, that means you have excess money. Your bank account is positive. If your bank account is in the red, then you're minus, so you're losing money. So businesses wanted to clear out all of their stock, all of their produce for the year and earn money and have money in the bank to close the year in the black. That's wrong. That's not the meaning of Black oh, Friday. but th that sounds much better than my explanation. No, but you are right. People, but why would people avoid that? The, my, my Friday is black because Black Friday exists. Okay, now I'll tell you what it really is. Okay. In the 1960s, police in Philadelphia in the U.S., complained because everybody came into the center of the city to go shopping the day after Thanksgiving. And it was also the day when there was a really big football game between the Navy team and the Army team. So you had the football match in the center of Philadelphia, everybody coming in to go shopping. So the police called it Black Friday because they hated working on that Friday. You're absolutely right, Lynn. Okay. Oh, well, no, I didn't. I just, I just invented that. <laughs> and, but that, that, that ties in with what, I don't know, I can't remember who said it, but somebody said that there was a parade and a Super Bowl. So obviously yes. around Thanksgiving, there is, it, there are important sports matches. There are still, but I thought Super Bowl was uh, a different time of year. I thought the Super uh, Bowl okay. was not in November, but I'm not 100% uh -huh. sure. Okay. Maybe somebody who's, who's watching can tell us. Uh -huh. um, but certainly about the shopping, that makes sense. Because if you said that you, they have Thursday off and they make a long weekend, then when they're on holiday, of course, everybody goes in to go shopping, I suppose, yeah. yeah? Oh, okay. And Hiram said that she heard from friends and family uh, say that in the USA, people get crazy because of the bargains, um, that many start fights for the things wow. they want to buy. Uh huh. Interesting that you mentioned bargains. That's one of the words on our list of vocabulary. Obviously, to discount is to reduce the price of something. You get discounts on Black Friday. You get mm -hmm. bargains, very good deals. What's a shopping spree? A shopping, <laughs> I, well, hmm, interesting. I don't know how to explain that. I think when you go shopping, you go shopping. But if on an occasion you go shopping and you spend a lot and you buy a lot, then we tend to call it a shopping spree. Is that right? Rather yeah, than a shopping trip. A shopping that's, trip. That's, to buy a lot. Make a shopping trip is just to go shopping and you buy something. But if you buy excessively, if you buy a lot of things, then you would say it's a shopping spree. And we also use the word with the word spending. Sometimes you've heard that one, Craig. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. she, she, he's on a spending spree, which means he's spending lots and lots of money. Uh huh. And if you think mm -hmm. about it, it, it makes sense. If there are lots of bargains in the shops, then you're going to be buying lots of things. You're, you're on a mm -hmm. spending spree yeah, because the fun. prices are marked down. So markdown is the noun. Markdowns, you get lower prices. Things are reduced and everything is not everything, but many things are marked down on Black mark, Friday. To mark is to make uh, with a pen to cross something out, to mark. And when you down, of course, reduced. So you're, you're crossing out, aren't you, the previous price and putting a reduced price underneath it, markdowns. Uh -huh. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, another expression we've got, uh, stock, limited stock. Stock are the products that are in the store or in the shop. And if the stock is limited, then you don't have a lot of it. So... If you're selling flat screen TVs, limited stock, you only are selling 100 at this particular price. So mm -hmm. the stock is limited. And a lot of shops do that, don't they? And that that is probably what leads to the fights that you were mentioning before, one of our students was mentioning before, the fights that she's heard about. And it is true that when there are lots of people and they all want the same thing, 
and they all go into the store at the same time, you can have a shopping frenzy. And the idea is that people are behaving like crazy people because they're all in a hurry to try to get the TVs if there's only a hundred of them. So a shopping frenzy is the idea that you're crazy. You're, you're going crazy when you're shopping. You're not shopping in a normal manner. Mm -hmm. And the word haul is, well, it has a couple of meanings. To haul is to, to pull or to drag, usually something that has a lot of weight. So a lorry or a truck will haul a trailer behind it. But if you go on a shopping frenzy or shopping spree, all of the things you have bought and you bring back to your, to your house, you can call it a haul. A so haul. all of the mm -hmm. things that you have bought is a whole of uh, of your shopping. Shopping. And then the last two words link into something that Hiriams uh, uh, mentioned, that uh, brick and mortar retail is the term for physical shops. We talk, retail means the, the, the industry of shops, mm -hmm, selling things, and brick and mortar versus online shopping really so you can you can buy things in real physical shops that are made of bricks and cement that's brick and mortar um or you can buy online and i think hiriam's just put an interesting question she said do you think have you got that one do you think that these fights do you think that these fights will continue happening now that we can buy things online Good Very question. Interesting. Uh -huh. Will people be in a frenzy <laughs> or can you be in a frenzy online? I think you can be in a frenzy online. I've seen my daughters in it because in Black Friday in previous years, the shops put up their online offers at midnight. And I know that my daughters have been waiting. Some people fill the virtual shopping basket with the things that they want. And then they want to log on to pay. And those things that were previously in their basket and then have reduced prices. Yeah. Uh, it's, and there's um, a, there's a, often a blockage. You can't get into the website because too many people are trying to access at the same time. So that's kind of like a virtual frenzy, if you like, of online shopping. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And as I put in the chat just now, websites sometimes crash if there's a mm. frenzy on a website and everybody's buying at the same time. There's so much traffic on the website that that could cause the, the online store to crash. Mm -hmm. And um, speaking of buying online, of course, Black Friday, as Lynn mentioned, is more often done in person. You go shopping, you go to brick and mortar stores. But on Monday, there's something called Cyber Monday, and I've just lost my list of vocabulary. Here we are. So Cyber Monday is where it's online. So the deals, the shopping, all the bargains are to be had on the internet. So Cyber Monday, Monday, and Black Friday is more brick and mortar. Although the line, I think, is is a bit blurred now, and we can also buy With Cyber things. Monday, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Making also, us. I think Cyber Monday didn't was it was it only for technological stuff? It was, wasn't it? Really, Cyber Monday. I think it was initially, where you could yeah. buy initially technical mm. stuff, but now it's everything. Now it's I everything. do apologise, Hiram. Hiram, uh, his pronouns are he and him. It's because I didn't recognise the name, Hiram. You're the first one I know, so I didn't know whether it was a she or a he. So, oh, sorry, sorry Hiram. Yeah, now sorry, we know. Hiram. Thank you. Now we Thank know. Thank you for Thanks. letting us know. Uh -huh. um, so there was a question that I thought was quite interesting. The most common objects that people in the US buy. So I just Googled it. Um, mm. Clothing and accessories, 82%. Wow. Uh, and, oh, and electronics as well. So clothing, clothes, accessories to clothes, like hats and belts and bags and jewelry and electronics those are the most popular according to google the most popular things that people buy in the us mm -hmm. 
Do you guys go shopping? And if you do, if you're intending to go shopping tomorrow, um, can you tell us what, you, what you're looking for? Oh, are you looking for things or do you just want to go see and buy? If you, are, you, are you looking with nothing specific in mind? Or are you intending to go shopping tomorrow with a, with a few things that you have your eye on? Mm -hmm. Do you get excited about this time of year with Black Friday? Yeah, do you Friday? get excited about Black Friday? Are you a bargain hunter? Mm -hmm. are, are you what, what about a bargain hunter? I am a bargain hunter, but I, I don't like shopping in shops when they're full of people. Me I neither. Yeah, it's, it's so, I mean, like, I'd rather not bother. So I, I don't I do look for bargains during the year, but I wouldn't really go. I'm not I'm definitely not going out tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. Not anywhere near a shop anyway. And I yeah. and I'm not really interested in trying to buy something online either this weekend, because I know in the past that the deliveries after Black Friday the online delivery, sometimes you can wait three weeks for something to come, which, yeah. excuse me, if anybody lives in a rural area, because possibly that's how long you normally wait. <laughs> uh, but we live in the city, so I'm used to stuff being delivered within one or two days. And then suddenly you order something and you have to wait three weeks. And then you're like thinking, has it been lost? Should I follow it up? Should I not? And then I think that it's better not to buy anything. <laughs> do you, Lynn, do you think they raise the prices of products before Black Friday and then reduce them to make people buy? Um, I don't know. I mean, I suppose some people do that. They do that with the normal sales, don't they? They often take things out and put, you know, put them back a month later. I don't know, really. I mean, I'm sure that there are some bargains out there. Yeah. 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 I mean, I look online uh, for things, but I agree with you. I think it would be crazy to go outside in the shopping frenzy and go to brick and mortar stores to look for bargains. And I, I'm, mm -hmm. no, I'm not very lucky in the sales. I don't usually find things that that fit me or in the color that I like or style that I like. I'm very unlucky mm -hmm. buying things in the sales, so I, I don't bother. Yeah. Craig, while people are writing what mm -hmm. they're going to buy, I think there's been a little conversation about, there was a question about Hot Pocket, Roberto. Can you see hot that one? Hot Pocket. It says, in the latest edition, uh -huh, in the <coughs> latest from Roberto, in the latest edition of the New York Times headlines, one of them says, make a hot pocket with your Thanksgiving leftovers. What does it mean? Do you know, Roberto? I don't know. Me neither. H Hiram says a hot pocket is like a burrito, as far as I know. Ah, that, it's... Ah, it's, so maybe it's like to make like a sandwich with your, like a burrito full of all of the the vegetables and things. Yeah, it is. This is what um, is it? Uncle uh -huh. Google says. Hot pockets are an American brand... Ah. Of microwavable, there's an adjective you don't see very often, microwavable, you can microwave uh -huh. it, turnovers. So a turnover is like a pastry that's closed and inside there's something sweet or something savory, ah. uh, usually containing one or more types of cheese, meat or vegetables. So in this case, they're savory, not, mm -hmm. not sweet. So basically, Hot they're pockets. suggesting you get all your leftovers and you make them into like a pie <laughs> or a little a little pie or a burrito or something, yeah? Well, my mum used to do that after Christmas with the turkey because yeah. like your example with those people that you had Thanksgiving with, we had a ridiculously big turkey and yeah. after there were we had lots of leftovers. So I used to make toasted turkey sandwiches with a bit wow. of cheese and tomato <laughs> for yeah. about a week after christmas day i know it makes yeah. a lot of sense because it's terrible if you throw the food away isn't it that's not good uh-huh uh minnie has already done her shopping she bought a few things she needed yesterday well well done oh. but did you get um did you get them at a cheaper price that's the point <laughs> mm. Uh -huh. Sorry, I, I said she. I got my you pronoun she, wrong. You got it's, your pronoun it's, wrong. It was he. It's Rafa, who clearly has a beard. So I'm sorry, Rafa. <laughs> 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 my pronouns are all over the place today. 
<laughs> Iberic you... ham. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Iberic ham already chopped and wrapped. Ooh, Ooh, lovely. Lovely. Mm -hmm. Alejandro, uh, I intend, I'm intending to go shopping tomorrow and I would like to buy a scooter. Wow, that's a big purchase. Uh -huh. Only if I get a good discount. I don't like going shopping on days in which places are full of people. So, mm -hmm. yeah, like us. I can, I can identify with Alejandro, though. I think if I needed to buy something that was an expensive item, like a scooter, then maybe I would look on Black Friday to see if you can get a bargain. Of course. But I, I'm not interested in going clothes shopping, you know, or, or things yeah. like that, really. But I think something big, like a, a big electronic, you know, if I needed a new computer or maybe I would look to see if you could get a good discount. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Last question. And I think we'll stop there. If you mm -hmm. had a free plane ticket to anywhere in the world, where would you most like to go shopping? <laughs> You've got to answer that, guys. Come on, right? <laughs> We're Craig's giving you the free plane ticket, so <laughs> yes, contact him at yeah. uh, manstoningles.com. <laughs> There's a free plane ticket tomorrow, and when you send me the email, it will still be tomorrow. And then when you send me again, it will still be tomorrow because tomorrow yeah. never comes. Now yeah. I have an answer for this, but I'm curious where you would go, Lynn. I have no idea. I don't really like shopping, Craig, to be frank with you. So when when you gave me that question before the before we started, I, I find it really difficult to say. I mean, people say there are wonderful places to shop in the world now, like Dubai or Japan <sighs> or Hong Kong. But they, I would definitely never, ever go there. I wouldn't go to a destination to shop. If I go anywhere... I like to do other things, you know, like, um, I don't know, adventure activities. <laughs> paddle can boarding. I go, can I go back to the Algarve? Yeah. <laughs> Stand up paddle boarding. Yeah. Will you give me a plane ticket for an adventure activity? <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you a paddle for Christmas. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> well, I will go to, there's a lovely, lovely shop in New York that sells electronics. It's called B&H. And... &H and oh. I went to New York a few years ago with my wife and I didn't tell her, but I booked the hotel right next to this shop because I like <laughs> it so much. Uh, I'm very keen on podcasting, microphones, things like that, gadgets and electronics. And I know that in this shop, it's one of the few places you can go to where you can actually try out these different microphones oh, in the wow. shop and there's experts who give you advice and everything uh -huh. is, you can test everything. And I spent a full day there just walking around and looking at things. And uh -huh. of course I bought some things as well, but it's a, it's a lovely, lovely shop and I'd love to go back. Uh -huh. Well, our listeners today, I think there's a lot of consensus there. They all want to go to Japan. Well, Maria yeah. Clara does. Hiram wants to go to Japan as well. Maria Diana. Clara does, and Diana too. So wow! So it's she, um, Maria says that in Japan you can always find amazing things at a great price. Well, wow. yeah. Mm, it was many Bargains. years ago that I went to Japan, so I I really don't know. But oh well, well there's a recommendation. Craig, I'll go to Japan with them. Okay, <laughs> okay. I think that's a good choice as well. Uh -huh. um, there is one one more question I'd like to get to uh, because I don't think you like the last one very much because you don't like shopping. What about this one, Lynn? If you could open a shop, what would you most like to sell? Cheese. <laughs> really? Yes, I would open a cheese shop. A cheese I shop? I love cheese. Uh -huh. And when I was a student, when I was my very first job, when I was 16, I worked in a shop and I used to work on the cheese counter. And because I love cheese, I, oh, to be around cheese all day. And I thought I was quite good at, sh at, I was quite proud of myself at how I could cut cheese and judge. With a what? With a wire? With the wires and things. Yeah, no, I would definitely um, work in a cheese shop. So I've yeah. got to ask you, I've got to ask you then, what's your mm -hmm. favorite cheese? Do you have one? Blue no. cheese, cheddar. I like all cheese. Brie, like all, all cheese. cheese. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm generally harder cheeses than softer cheeses, but I love all cheese. I really do. Mm. Uh -huh. Manchego, it's lovely cheese. Spanish mm -hmm. cheese is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you, what kind of, well, you'd like to go and sell your microphones and things, I bet, would you? 
I'd like, yeah, I'd like an um, electronic shop, maybe. Yeah, microphones and audio equipment would mm -hmm. be, be fun. But I don't think I'd be very good at selling, and I don't think I'd be very good dealing with the public mm. um, like that. So I don't think it's the best job for me. Mm -hmm. Oh, Rafa wouldn't come to my shop. He says he hates <sighs> cheese. <laughs> but Ignacio would. He wants ham, cheese, oil, and wine. That's the good. I should have said cheese and wine. I think. I think Ignacio's cleverer there. <laughs> Caroline says she'd be easily overwhelmed by too much on offer, so mm -hmm. she'd be happy with Bonn, her hometown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Are you going back to Germany for Christmas? I'd love to go to Germany for Christmas. Christmas market. It's lovely. Um, That's very nice. I would go shopping there. That's a nice place to go. Right. To, Christmas because market. Because you're outside. Yeah. Uh huh. You're outside and it's mm. nice. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, unfortunately, we are out of time and out of money. We've spent so much money on Black Friday that we don't have any left. So, <laughs> so you won't be paying for those <laughs> plane tickets then, will you? So not, I won't Craig? be paying for the plane tickets, unfortunately. <laughs> I might be able to buy some cheese tomorrow. We'll see. <laughs> Thank you for spending an hour with us. It's been uh, a lot of fun. And if you don't know us, we'll remind you who we are or tell you who we are if you've just joined us. Mansioningles.com is the website where you can learn English for free, particularly if you're a Spanish speaker. And we also have a podcast at inglespodcast.com or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And if you're interested in practicing your fluency and your speaking and becoming more confident and a more effective communicator, You can find out more at EnglishCraig.com and also book a free consultation. And I'll give you more information about my conversation courses. Lynn? Okay. And um, I'm also an online teacher. So if you're interested in finding your own voice in English, <laughs> that was the, the, the big premise behind put it like this because I want you to be able to put it like the way you want to put it like <laughs> in English. So um, I specialize in tailor making courses to, to help you be able to communicate in the situations that you want to communicate in in English. So if you have an objective, a very clear objective, then you can get in touch with me over putitlikethis.com and I can see if I can help you. You can also find out on the website too the types of things that I've done in the past and maybe they fit with some of your objectives or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you, Ignacio, and everybody watching, I think you are all awesome. And I think that American <laughs> expression on Thanksgiving Day is the perfect way to end. So yeah. thank you very much. Well, I can be, what we really should say is, what are we really thankful for today, Craig? And what we're really thankful for is lovely students like you who come and engage with us and really try to practice your English in the online stream. It's really nice. If it wasn't for you, we would just be talking to each other. <laughs> <laughs> we, and that we'll would be, be boring. <laughs> well, no, it wouldn't. I don't think I'm boring, Lynn. <laughs> Maybe a little. Um, thank you. Thank you, Carmen. We'll see you in two weeks. Lynn will be back with me in two weeks' time. We'll do one more, yeah, before Christmas, mm -hmm. Lynn? Yes, of course, uh, definitely, or two. And... I don't know if we've got time for two, whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll see. Hopefully, I'll be able to do something next week. I'm not sure if I'll be able to, but keep watching uh, Facebook, keep watching Twitter, Manchon de Inglés, and I will be posting there any, uh, any live streams that maybe happen next week. We'll see. Thanks for watching. Have a good week, and we'll see you soon. Yeah, bye-bye. And don't spend too much money. <laughs> Keep the money in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs>